Hey, Walter here. I'm going to talk about cycles and how you can use this in your own trading. One of the things that I found fascinating uh, learning about real estate is how builders, those who build things, build homes and apartments and things like that, they almost always go bankrupt, <laughs> which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Like how many businesses do you know that uh, like typically go bankrupt? Like that's the end game for many of them, which is really interesting. And uh, and there's a lot you can look up this stuff. Uh, is my builder going bankrupt? A lot of things. The top 10 builder liquidation hall of shame. <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But here's why this happens. The reason why this happens is really comes down to the cycles of business. So what typically happens over time is that the GDP or this basically everything that an economy produces, a country, uh, a, a business niche, for example, like builders or whatever, uh, you'll see it will go up, it will come down, it will go up, and it will come down. There's there's these cycles. We all understand that. You and I get it. As traders, you see this. But what a lot of people don't realize, and this is kind of, uh, it's one of our biases that we have. It's a cognitive bias that we have. It's called the status quo cognitive bias. What that means is we typically think that things are going to be tomorrow kind of like what they are like today. Things are going to be like in a year from now, kind of like what they're going to be today. And when you ask people to make economic pr predictions, you'll often hear that. And if you've read The Black Swan by um, Nassim Taleb, you know all about how that's not really the way the world works. Typically, something comes out of left field, completely impacts an industry or a country, or a timeline, and then later on we look back and go, oh, well, we could have seen that coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we use a hindsight bias to kind of pave over it. But that's not that's not the reality. The reality is is that there are good times and there are bad times, that the market will go up and the market will go down. And it's one of the reasons why I like to look at the charts from that filter, even if, even if I have a bias and I think that you know, the charts are probably going to keep going up or down. For example, like right now, I've got a bias on the pound, and I have a sell bias on the pound, and I want to sell the pound. And the reason why I want to sell the pound is because the pound's been going down. This is the two-day chart on the pound, and it's been going down. But the, here's the question. What kind of cycle is the pound in right now? I believe it's in what we would call an upward cycle or a retracement phase. Uh, and we've seen several of these. We saw one here. We saw one here. And they come in two flavors. They either, usually you get a retracement phase where the market kind of goes up, like it did here, against a downtrend. Let's just look at a downtrend in this case. We can look at an uptrend in a minute, but let's just look at a downtrend. It's going up against the downtrend, and also when the market just goes sideways. So it doesn't actually go up or down, but just kind of sits sideways and just sits there for a while before it resumes the downtrend. I think that's what we're in right now. And I think if you look at the open position ratios, I think that those data actually fit. For example, you can see here that the pound, 73% uh, uh, of our traders are currently long the pound. This this data is pulled from IG Markets. You can go to IG, Google IG Markets, pound USD and open position ratios if you want to see any of these. But they're updated every 10 minutes over there. But this is really what I use to define the power of the trend, is to figure out well, what are traders doing. If they're going mostly buying, then it's a downtrend. The reason why that's the case is that if you think back to when you started trading, you probably would look for a strong uptrend and you want to sell it, and you'd probably look for a downtrend and want to buy it. Almost all traders do that. Not all, but about 75 to 80 percent of the traders do that. And you can use this to your advantage. And we're doing this in the Small Account Big Profits course. You can click the link below this video to get more information about that. But it's pretty simple stuff. All we're really doing is waiting for a nice trend, waiting for a retrace move or a breakout move, and we're going with the strong trends, which in this case, right now, I would define as the pound, the pound yen, the pound cad, the pound Swiss. Do you notice a pattern there? <laughs> or some of these other ones down here, like the, the Aussie dollar, the Aussie kiwi, the Aussie Swiss, all of those are pretty uh, good looking uh, trends as well. So that's how we do this. That's how I like to trade the trend. And that's how I like to use these cycles, because because I know that the, the or I assume that the pound is in a downtrend now. So all I think is happening really is that this is a retracement move. That all we're really getting here, I could even draw a little trend line here like this, and I could say, okay, trend line, you hold the price there as long as you can. And as soon as the price falls and makes a move down, I'll go ahead and sell again and get back on the back on my horse. And that's all I really want to do here. That's all I really want to do. It works with an uptrend too. Again, you can learn more about this by going to the link below this video 
where I tell you all about how we're taking a small thousand dollar account and we're growing it quickly using these principles. So I wish you very happy trading. I hope that this helps thinking in terms of cycles. And we'll see you in another video. Take care. Bye.